Hey guys, so I'm sure most of you were expecting the third part of my Japanese guide for beginners, but we're gonna do a slight pivot today. Instead, we're gonna talk about what I believe is the best phone which you could buy in 2020. The LG V50S. Not to be confused with the LG V50 with the pins in the back, or the LG G8X, which is what it is known as in Western countries. Now the V50S is Korea exclusive. Um, it's more well known as the G8X, but the Korea exclusive one has twice the memory. You're looking at 256 gigabytes of storage space, and you're looking at 8 gigs of RAM. Now, this doesn't seem like such a big deal, because I mean 6 gigs of RAM isn't that different from 8 if you're a standard user. But if you're doing something like video editing, or more importantly, you're um, studying, then this 8 gigs makes a huge difference. You can see here that um, my usage constantly comes near to 6. So if this was only 6 gigs of RAM, I would be almost maxing out my regular usage of this phone, which is, well, that kind of sucks anyway. Uh, the biggest thing of why I think this phone is great is number one, it is only around 30,000 pesos. And you would argue, okay, this is a 30,000 pesos. What can I get for 30,000 pesos? And well, this phone has a Snapdragon 855. It's the uh, top model of 2019. You could also argue that, well, the 855 Plus, which is available in the ROG Phone 2, would cost me the same thing. However, um, my way of uh, countering for that is that um, the LG phone, um, since the, I think the V40 or the original V50, has had dual screens. And the dual screens are a game changer. For reference, the LG V60 is around 40,000 pesos, but it's not available here in the Philippines, so you have to either forward ship it and then after you forward ship it, you're going to have to unlock it. Or you could have a direct ship, uh, probably via FedEx or UPS, unlocked. But you don't really know whether it has in fact been unlocked since they're only available on eBay or Swappa. Um, you could also get the Galaxy Fold 2 or the Galaxy Fold 1. But this is around 65,000 pesos. I'm not sure what it is now. Maybe 55,000? Still a little more than half or a little less than half. Or the Huawei Mate X, which is the most popular, most expensive Huawei phone right now, which folds outwards. Yeah, that's around 70 last I checked. So, I mean, having a dual screen phone for 30,000 pesos is an insanely, insanely good deal. Now, a lot of reviewers have said that dual screen phones are mostly just a gimmick. Folding phones are mostly just a new gimmick. And there's not a lot you can do with them at the moment. Um, that's really about to change. As we all know, the Microsoft Surface Duo is releasing this Christmas, or sometime in the holiday season anyway. And they've been working on this for quite a long time already. So, you know, uh, one of the first things I'd like to talk about is why having two screens is actually a lot better than you, what you think it should be. Now, one of the best uses of the dual screen phone is for writing practice. The way I like to use it is I will usually open the dictionary on the left side. This will contain the stroke order if you're doing hiragana, katakana, or if you're a little bit more advanced, you can use kanji. And on the right side, you can practice the writing. This is also useful if you're using, say, Anki for Android, wherein you can have Anki open in the left window and if you make a mistake or you forget about it, you can recall the Anki um, by opening it on the right side and looking at the descriptive meaning. Uh, you don't have to go and move between two different screens. You don't need to minimize and reopen another screen. So uh, in terms of how useful it is for um, knowledge retention, it's kind of a lot more useful than just having like one screen, which you're constantly changing and switching back and forth with. Another favorite thing I like to do with uh, having two screens is your main screen is still capable of going into split screen. And so you have three different apps open. So let's say you're writing on the bottom part of your app 
this is pretty easy. It's an Android phone, so you could just use any type of stylus which is compatible with Android. Personally, I use the Adonit Jot-3, but um, you could also just use a regular capacitive stylus. This could just go for like 100, 120 pesos each. Uh, you could use your finger if you're more comfortable with that, um, but you know, just for uh, test-taking purposes or um, for the feel of it, I would suggest you at least get a stylus. Now, um, you could also argue, okay, well, the LG, uh, what's in the what's this called again? The LG Velvet is the newer version, and the LG Velvet actually supports active styluses. And also, the LG Velvet has a uh, much bigger, well, not really much bigger, um, a slightly bigger battery life, which is kind of cool. But it's also a lot more expensive now if you get the LG Velvet, and it's only running a Snapdragon 765, I believe. Versus the 855, which uh, I know the rage all nowadays is gaming phones and business phones. No one ever talks about how you can kind of meld the two together. It's either you're a gamer or you're a businessman. But, you know, it shouldn't be that simplified. The V50S um, has a 855 Snapdragon. So, technically, you can play games on it. And when you have the dual screen, I'm sure this comes up in other reviewers' channels, you can also map it out and play 3DS games or DS games. You can use Drastic Emulator, or I believe now what we have is the Citra Emulator for 3DS. Don't come to my channel for those reviews. There are a lot of better channels if you want to see how the game on it. But it provides you with two different screens, so you get all that gaming performance, if that was what you were buying it for. Admittedly, uh, I also thought about this, but the biggest uh, usage in my case is for studying. Uh, having two apps open at the same time allows you to better absorb the knowledge. And by constantly writing what you're seeing on the other screen, it really helps transition the raw knowledge from what's written, uh, I'm sorry, from what you see to what is written. I've also preached a lot about um, how you don't need physical classes to learn a language, and you can do everything simply through apps, and if you decide you want to, some online learning. So, another great thing about the LG phones, although they're not as popular as the Samsung Dex or the Huawei... Uh, I forget what it's called, but they have a desktop mode. Uh, the LG also has a desktop mode. And, okay, admittedly it's a little rough. Uh, it's still kind of more like a beta mode, but you can put this phone into desktop mode by plugging it to a portable touchscreen monitor. And on that touchscreen monitor, you can do the same thing as having the dual screen phone. What I mean by this is you can write on the phone, you can have two apps open. It basically works like a Windows PC, but instead, it's mobile. Uh, you could probably argue, well, that doesn't make sense. Why don't I just get a Samsung phone? if I just wanted that sort of touchability and usage. Yes, you could do that, but again, this phone's like 30,000 pesos as compared to getting the newest Samsung phone or at least a Samsung phone with a Snapdragon 855, which will probably be around 40,000, and you don't get the second screen. In this case, this thing can be used, um, by the way, if you're not aware, the second screen is detachable. It's more of an accessory, but I keep it on like maybe 85% of the time. Um, so you can use it as a single phone. You can have the second screen when you want to be extra productive. And when you're at home or if you're in a place where you want to use it as a desktop, you can now plug in this phone and run it on desktop mode. So, you know, there's like three uses for this one single phone, which again is like 30,000 pesos. Uh, if you're asking, okay, is it that great? I mean, I could always buy a gaming phone with that money. Yes, you can. If gaming was your primary and only objective, then yeah, well, sure. You could easily get a gaming phone for this price. But the biggest selling point I've been um, stating here is the second screen. The second screen, ugh, I there's just no way to describe how useful it is. It's It helps you edit better. It helps you run multiple apps together. Um, again, other reviewers have better ways of saying what they use it for. You can run maps. You can instantly send um, screenshots to someone you're talking to without having all of this 
um, extra movement and extra keys which you have to press before you can send it. But that's not really the point. My point is that it's a Snapdragon 855 with 8 gigs of RAM and 4000 mAh battery. And it's just terrific for studying because you just it's got you you can just run so many apps at the same time well two apps at the same time but it's great for practicing how you write and what you're going to be doing so yeah uh really it's july of 2020 right now i don't know when you're going to be watching this i don't know if the um microsoft surface duo has been released already but as of now i would say that if you're in the market for a new phone and you'd like to be able to multitask or in my case, study more efficiently without having to carry around a notebook or paper or, you know, um, all these complicated materials. This is the best phone for your money. It's about, um, let's say, seven, eight thousand pesos cheaper than the newest Velvet. And it's around 15,000 pesos cheaper than getting the LG V60. So... If you're on a budget and you need something that basically works for office, can also be for games, but mostly for studying, I would recommend this phone. That's it. Uh, part 3 will be up next week. I just really had to make this video because it's just so useful and it's been really great for helping me study and I just had to share that with you guys. So, see you next time.